Namaste everyone, welcome to part 3 of the PC Blueprint video. So in part 2, we discussed what topics are going to be asked. In part 1, we discussed the basic weighting. So if you haven't checked those videos, please do check it out. And I'm hoping by now you have your blueprint printed out and you are already starting to mark things on it. In part 3, what we are going to discuss is what sort of things could be asked under those headings, under those topics like let's say what can be asked under low back pain or what can be asked under pregnancy. These are the things that we are going to discuss. So let's get started. It's a 12 to 15 minute video. You better take your note and pen and get ready. Alright, so this is the list of functions evaluated by PCE. First and foremost, uh, this list is again not exhaustive, but this this will tell you what you are going to study and what is going to be uh, the focus of the exam in terms of uh, if you are preparing for orthopedics, okay, and if you are uh, preparing for, I don't know, uh, let's say low back pain, okay, so if you are uh, focusing on low back pain as your topic, how are you going to assess the client? What sort of present history, past history do you need? What sort of social history do you need? Uh, how does, uh, you know, does the client have to, does the patient stand throughout the day? Uh, or do they have a desk job? What are their expectations? What are the expectations out of physiotherapy, right? Uh, so this, again, this assessment and evaluation portion is also, uh, like client goals and patient-centric treatment is also going to be evaluated during your PC practicals as well. Because... You, you need to make sure that your your treatment plan is client centric. So let's say my patient doesn't like doing swimming. She doesn't want to swim. And if I tell you uh, tell her that, you know, for OA, you, swimming is good. You should go do swimming. But she doesn't like it. So I need to figure out other form of exercises that she will do because she doesn't really enjoy swimming. So that is patient centric treatment. Instead of just giving a, a general exercise, uh, I would make sure that my exercises are relevant for the patient she enjoys doing it, okay? So assessment and evaluation does focus on data collection. First, you need to gain the data uh, as to what the patient wants, what uh, is the patient's history. Then there are tests and measurements as well. How are you going to assess a patient uh, with low back pain? What sort of uh, test? Are you going to do a hamstring test to see if there are tight hamstrings or not? As something as simple as that as well, right? So you will be uh, performing evaluations and assessments and what sort of equipments you would use. Uh, and also, if the patient is in an acute care, so this is more uh, related to your PC practicals. If the patient is in acute care, how are you going to handle the patient? Like if there are IV lines attached, how are you going to walk the patient in the corridor after the TKR or THR? Something like that, okay? Now, you're also going to examine and evaluate uh, for neuromuscular conditions neurological conditions how what sort of test you are going to use your special test uh what sort of special test you are going to use for someone with pyriformis syndrome things like that again you also are going to focus on contraindications if there is ra if there's acute ra are you going to do joint mobilization or not no you are not going to do joint mobilization if there is uh, acute swelling and the patient has pain okay severe pain you're not going to mobilize the joint um I mean, you could do grade one, grade two, but again, it's it's deb debatable, okay? So, also, uh, you are going to focus on uh, providing gait aids, mobility aids, right? If the patient has TKR and the patient has pain during wa uh, walking, are you going to give a walker or are you going to provide crutches? Or what happens to a patient who has just uh, gotten a below knee amputation? What sort of prosthetic device you would suggest? Things like that, you need to uh, be prepared for that. Okay, now interpretation, planning, intervention. How are you going to interpret the data? How are you going to make a PT plan? What sort of intervention? How are you going to reevaluate this patient? 50 to 55 percent of the exam questions would be focusing on these kind of scenarios. So, again, you need to identify uh, if the patient has any potential barriers, any precautions or contraindication to the treatment that you are planning for the patient, right? So if a patient has OA, I would not just go ahead and start with, uh, you know, back stretch. I would check what sort of uh, what sort of position the patient is comfortable with, right? That those sort of things contraindications precautions basically as well what sort of precautions would i uh, take with a pregnant woman uh, she's eight months pregnant what sort of exercises would i do things like that 
determine need for pt treatment and if there is a referral necessary okay very important to know when to refer the patient to the doctor okay if there is any change in the medications or if you feel like the patient uh, needs to be screened for cancer you are going to refer them to your doctor you are not going to give the uh, diagnosis to them without uh, you know if it's not in your field of uh, if, if if it's not in your field of practice you are going to refer them to the doctor prognosis uh, so again with clinical component they the patient might ask you a question during your clinicals that uh, when do you think i can go back uh, to my game if someone has an uh, acl injury and the, the the 18 year old is asking you when can i go back to my game what are you going to tell goal settings and care planning so you are going to uh, you know create a smart goal which is specific measurable attainable time relevant and i mean time based you are going to prepare a smart goal you are going to make sure that you are pr prioritizing the client's problems what are the client goals and how are you going to again this is more focused on the practical aspect of it uh, practical exams again you are also you also need to justify your treatments and your procedures why are you doing a joint manipulation as opposed to why are you providing a stretch uh you don't have to like verbalize it but you, this is again more focused on your practical aspects like uh why am i doing grade 1 joint mobilization for pain relief you have to give some logical reasoning to it what are the uh, uh, outcome measures are you going to use a dash scale or uh, you know if it's cardiopulmonary are you going to ask the patient to know uh, to use uh, rest rpe so that they know uh, when to stop doing the exercises things like that implementation now this is something that you need to focus on again this is more uh, i mean you would be asked in the theory exam about these topics as well but in the practical component you would be doing them you will be performing them and now the practical is online so i don't know how that is going to go but you are supposed to be performing them in the practicals so uh let's say right now during the virtual exams we are preparing uh that you know how would i give a patient exercises without any equipment so using laundry bags broomsticks uh even if you don't have any laundry bags you're just going to do uh you know active range of motion exercises passive range of motion exercises things like that okay joint mobilization very important uh to know in terms of what sort of grade you are going to provide why you are going to provide grade 3 as opposed to a uh, grade 1 things like that joint manipulation soft tissue techniques uh, endurance exercise program postural training positioning specifically for cardiopulmonary uh, conditions uh, gait mobility assessment gait assessment as well uh, that's something that they do focus on the pract in the practical exams as well okay so gait assessment uh now gliding techniques specifically for wrist surgeries wrist injuries so things like this you'll need to keep in mind okay i know it's it's it's, it's a lot but we are going to get this done with okay so you are this is like uh the 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 table focuses on gait training balance training uh use of modalities so you should know how to use a pp how to uh you know check a patient's balance how to train uh, their proprioception uh sensory training techniques uh then traction then compression how are you going to use paraffin wax bath what sort of temperature would be hot packs when are you going to use hot going to use hot packs when are you going to use cold packs emg tens ifc hpvc um uh, laser ultraviolet uh short short wave diathermy if you know the basics and you know or uh, you know what sort of uh skill set you need for that it's more than enough ultrasound uh orthotics prosthesis uh yeah this this one is important as well recognize and respond to the adverse effect of an intervention so if you are using hot packs or if you are using uh if you have just given your uh, clients i don't know prosthesis and they develop pressure sores or there is pressure sensitive area because of the orthotics what are you going to do because of the prosthetics what are you going to do things like that then comes an important aspect of education client education is very important so how are you going to educate your client their family uh, other healthcare providers uh, how are you going to educate a pta okay uh, things like that you would be focusing as well uh, and it's a good idea to check uh, 
कॉलेज ऑफ ऑन्टारियो कॉलेज ऑफ फिजियोथेरेपी ऑफ ऑन्टारियो कॉलेज ऑफ ऑन्टारियो फिजियोथेरेपी वेबसाइट ओके इट्स समवेयर अराउंड दैट चेक द वेबसाइट बिकॉज दे डू हैव यू नो गाइडलाइंस ऑन हाउ टू यू नो सुपरवाइज द पी टी ए और हाउ टू टेक कंसेंट दे डू हैव गाइडलाइंस सो इट्स अ गुड रीड इफ यू गो थ्रू इट वॉन्स इट कुड बी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू इन द एग्जाम्स इंटरवेंशन प्रोग्रेशन ओके हाउ आर यू गोइंग टू प्रोग्रेस वेन आर यू गोइंग टू रिड्यूज द नंबर ऑफ यू नो वेन आर यू गोइंग टू रिड्यूज योर एक्सरसाइजेस वेन आर यू गोइंग टू इंक्रीज द नंबर ऑफ रिपिटेशन दैट यू नीड फॉर दिस पेशेंट वॉट आर यू गोइंग टू डू हाउ आर यू गोइंग टू प्रोग्रेस और रिग्रेस ओके सो हाउ आर यू गोइंग टू एडजस्ट रिवाइज और डिसकंटिन्यू वेन द पेशेंट्स गोल्स आर अचीव्ड और द ट्रीटमेंट इज नो लॉन्गर इफेक्टिव ओके so that's that professional responsibilities you do need to respect the confidentiality and the dignity of the family and the client communication consent is a big thing uh, both for written and practical component uh, practice management how are you going to document how, what till what time you are going to store your documents how are you going to make sure that uh, you know the the patient's details are protected uh, to make sure that their privacy is maintained okay the and infection control specifically with covid uh, you do need to focus a lot on your ppe as well i don't know if they'll be asking you questions on that but again uh, infection control is a good aspect that you need to focus on and prioritization they sometimes do ask questions like if you are overbooked and you have patient uh, who needs you uh, are you going to see patient a or are you going to see patient b first and are you going to give this patient to a physiotherapy assistant or are you going to do it by yourself so if you can't really ask your pta to uh, do evaluations for you reevaluations for you but you can give them uh, exercise protocols that you have already uh, designed for the patients and they can sort of be with the patient and get them to do those exercises things like that So yeah that brings you us to page 8 of 9 and now finally we are here at this point when we are discussing what is not asked in the exams okay this is the fun part right so they don't ask all these things they don't ask how are you going to uh, administer cpr how are you going to apply first aid things like that because this is not something that they want to evaluate for an entry to practice physiotherapist again you are not going to be asked how are you going to adjust orthosis or positioning devices or identify heart sounds so you could just go through this you are not going to be asked about needling techniques or uh, dry needling or you are not going to be asked about uh, taping techniques phonophoresis things like that okay so that concludes our pc blueprint now what i want you guys to do next is get your blueprint printed i am hoping you already done that if not start doing that get a canada diary make a book or a word page or whatever you want to jot down all the things that you gain uh, you know all the information that you have on your journey to canada that would help you when you start your process and i also want you to get your reference books just start thinking of what reference books you'll uh, use whatever books you have right now you can use them it's it's not necessary that you have to use one specific book just start to uh, you know prepare for the exams and slowly and steadily you know what to do and as always we are there available on instagram facebook and even on youtube so if you have any questions just ask us there okay all the best